Welcome to What Have You, featuring Rachel Jankovic and Rebecca Merkel. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. And I am Becca Merkel. We are here doing our civic duty and podcasting <laughs> today. This is four. This is Woo! four in a row. Now, granted, the jury's still out. Let another praise you and not just your because own we're podcasting here, record. Just because we're sitting here talking doesn't mean we're going to ship this one out or get it to the people who are top You never it. know when the Holy Spirit will well, edit us. <laughs> you don't. You do not. And I'm going to say, you guys, I was in Florida till late last night. We just rolled in the door and just warm and lovely and green and lush mm. and here we sit now on a barren windswept moor with the <laughs> with the snow falling upon us and i actually it's very pretty it is lovely and it is so different and it just gives you that appreciation of god is doing so many different things at the same time yep so many different kinds of beauty we and get a decent amount of sun even in the winter like but the days are so short, which we yeah. then get back in. It's like um, having more tax deductions at the front end of the paycheck and then getting <laughs> a big return because because in the summer we have the longest days ever. Like, it's beautiful and yeah. long. And, but right now, the sun goes down when you're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> well, today is quite monochromatic. It's a lot of khakis. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, I told you all a long time ago how I know nothing about birds, and it's a shame to me that I know nothing about birds. And I've been diligently, diligently trying to know a little more about mm-hmm. birds yeah. here and there. Yeah. Like, I'm like, let's, you know, yeah. try harder, Rachel. Let's try. Let's see if we can identify. And I've gotten a little better about a few of them, but the thing that now is just non-stop in my face is how ignorant I am of the hawks and falcons yeah. of the world yeah. because we really live in hawk country like already but specifically in the country in the middle of the fields because this is ideal hawk hunting, hunting grounds. ground yeah so we have this just a vast assortment of of these birds that I could not I think my general hand waving of it's a hawk has started to feel like, it kind of like waving at the produce at the produce department <laughs> and being like that's some fruit fruit, fruit yeah over there. there's fruit Rachel okay we were driving uh we landed in Miami and then we drove and so sadly I did not look at a map as we drove so I don't even know what direction in particular we were going <laughs> let just know that I was perusing Florida I kept being stunned by the birds just in the tree on the side of the road. It would be an enormous tropical looking thing that was as big as an owl. And I'd be like, what is that? Yeah. And then a minute later, oh, whoa, what's that one? And Ben's driving, but I kept being like, look at that. Look at that over there. They're huge. They're the size of turkeys, but they're in the trees and they're white. What does it mean? <laughs> and then Ben at one point was like, I think that was like a, enormous chicken it was like i don't know what it was it was like a bird but it was like a huge chicken like, is it a bird is it a chicken what is this thing you no know, he's like no it's on the side of the road i didn't see that one but he was like it was shaped like a chicken but it was like as big as a turkey <laughs> that's what i'm saying it makes you feel like you've really been taken back to grade yeah. school and you're flunking at the like yeah. circle the thing because a little while ago we, i got home from school with the kids and there was this I was like, is that a hawk? It is huge. Like, it was just sitting in the kind of snowbanky side of our driveway. Just sitting there. I was like, but that is a big hawk. Or or you're asking yourself, or are we just closer to this than is I... an owl? What is it? Yeah, but then its head pivots around and it is an owl. Oh. And we all go, it's an owl! <laughs> well, then we get out our Merlin bird identification mm-hmm. app. Mm-hmm. Can we locate an owl that looks like this? No, we cannot. We find one. We're certain it's... It's the one, but it's like a, an owl that's like the size of a robin. And we were like, oh. well, why would we have commented on its great size? Oh, it funny. can't have been that. Jemima's still a bit bitter because sometime in elementary school, 
it was suspected that she was colorblind by her teacher. <laughs> and we took her to the eye doctor. And it was just because she was bombing the bird unit. <laughs> And she was like, no, because the teacher thought she couldn't tell the difference between colors. And she's like, I just couldn't remember which color went with which name. <laughs> you, you, may, you may be disabled, Jemima. This may be so... Well, what happens to me now is every time I'm trying to learn a little something, something about which hawk is what hawk. And every time I try to take any of this into account, I'm like... There is no knowing because you look yeah. them up and they, uh, each genre of hawk has all of these subcategories of being a, uh-huh. a juvenile morph shark yeah. shin talk. I'm like, yeah. well, how would I know? How uh, was it? You just I mean, need to get somebody real to tell you because but I feel how? like those identifier apps sometimes they don't help. go real wrong. Because I've seen not... people posting pictures of plants that they are wildly misidentifying and it's because they did it with their app instead of do you like my hair it's really uh not good not- <laughs> <laughs> just twirled uh, it into a pen on the anyways, top of my head it's it's a really it's a really but i also love the fact that having lived here my whole life having seen a zillion hawks you're, it's like a different kind of version of when you would lay down on your stomach and just stare at the ground and like yes, realize yeah, how, what a right, vast, yeah. vast world there is there yeah. that you have no knowledge of, but that every part of it is curated oh, by no. God who knows and sees. Well, and this brings up something that I have been thinking about lately, and I am trying. Am I trying, or am I just sort of doing it? I don't know, but I feel like. There are certain, like, flowers that it's not at all difficult to think that they're beautiful. Like a peony, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. a real easy one. I feel like that one is a lob. Yeah. But then there's other things that are just real weird. And I feel like I'm trying to really look at things differently now where it's like... That one might be a little harder to love, but like I've always felt that there's irises, something amazing. Specifically, the brown irises of oh, the I world know, I know, are I sort know. of the obscene gesture of the <laughs> floral world. I've always yeah, felt it, yeah. And but I too have journeyed to yeah. not yeah. let myself right. indulge that because kind of like not wanting to be like spiders are evil. Well, okay, I don't like spiders at all, but I mean, like, I try to I try to govern my own response to creation. Okay, well, it's like looking out at the brown of the fields and the clouds and the little blustery snow that's falling and the stubble and the brown weeds and stuff. And it's like you could look at it and just go, ugh, it's brown. But there's actually so much beauty there. It, it is not hard to love a gorgeous, lush green landscape. That is a really easy one. And I feel like trying to like pay attention to appreciating mm-hmm. it when it is melting slow and sn- snow and slush. And it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I there's know just that sort of like, because anybody can like a peony. I just watched a video that a friend sent me yesterday that was a Michelin star chef telling a story about when one of his under chefs or sous chefs somebody else who was in the kitchen but another chef dropped they were plating two lemon tarts for dessert and he dropped one of them Mm -hmm. and it was like a disaster it blew up upside down and that he uh, as the chef says being a good Japanese chef was ready to kill himself this Mm -hmm. guy was like Mm -hmm. my honor it's gone Yeah, and the uh Head chef was like, no, don't you see how beautiful this is? So they recreated the upside down exploded lemon tart on the other plate also. Oh, like they just yeah. dropped, you know, then they played it at all that looked like a shattered. It was this like explosive bright yellow thing shooting off the side yeah, and like right. they just dropped it and did it. And while the funny part is I didn't think it looked that, I could imagine that being very pretty, but it sure. wasn't sure. It, in, I, you know. Not to my taste, but whatever the case, mm-hmm. I enjoyed his little soliloquy about finding the beauty in those things right. that are that are not the yeah. thing that you meant to right. have. Because I, I feel like it does I'm take... I'm going to try to find the beauty in, like, effort. 
yeah. random assortment of junk on the outside of the house that I need to deal with. <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean? Like, just taking time to appreciate different things that are not necessarily immediately to Or your not taste. your own intuitive love. Yes. Yes. A lot of the time, people do that where they're like, I don't like fruit. Or yeah. I don't like cheese or I don't mm-hmm. like and they have when they say that there's some I've, I know I've said this before on the podcast probably but we don't let our kids do that as funny as it may be they are not allowed to say things like I hate sandwiches we're sure. just like no I don't care if it's not your best or it's not your favorite thing mm-hmm. or you know yeah. it's not that we're saying you can't have that taste but even I am not I don't naturally love stinky cheeses and Uh real like that is not something that my heart thinks of as a great idea but I am aware that this is something that I am insufficiently capable of appreciating which means that you do want to keep challenging yourself to learn about that and to think like okay so I don't love this thing but the whole world is that everybody with any taste knows that I'm wrong about my shrooms That's the thing. I don't love mushrooms, although I will cook with mushrooms and stuff. I don't mind the flavor. I don't love the texture. But my point is that I also try to not let myself whiz off and be... Set it in concrete? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I would like to keep challenging myself. And because of that, I actually like them far more than I used to. Like, I have Mm -hmm. far more... Mm -hmm. I do feel that this is the time when we ought to tell a story on mom, though. Which is when we had that years ago, the winemaker's dinner, and there was a salad that had cold, cold baby octopus <laughs> in it, like those little tiny, little tiny ones, little tiny octopuses. Which I I didn't intuitively warm to eating a cold baby <laughs> octopus. Luke did. Luke was like, "Tell me more about this interesting <laughs> event." I was like, "Huh." A little octopus, <laughs> but I did taste it. Like I did eat it, and I didn't, and it yeah. was good. But I right. wasn't like, it was the kind of thing for me at least that you couldn't think about too closely. I just was yeah. like, let's just press on. Yeah. Mom, however, didn't care for the that at all. But mom mm-hmm. is very, you do need to know, very polite, very on it. So, but the man across the table from mom. Was just, could not get enough of the baby octopuses. So mom was like, would you like mine? So And he was very excited about it. So she furtively looks all directions to make sure she can quickly, without being noticed by any of the serving staff, get the octopus across yeah. the table. Which is already outside the bounds of mom's regular behavior, I think. But I think she was I think she was feeling urgent to not have it on her plate. <laughs> and so she gets the thing on her fork and goes to and it falls off of her fork straight into her water glass where it assumes standard octopus flotation look. It just looked like it had gone back to its like homeland. She just had a little baby octopus floating in her water goblet. And at which point her heart stops and she panics. So she throws her napkin over the top of her water goblet, shrouding the death of the octopus in some secrecy. Whizzes it under the table, I think, was holding it under the table. While the guy across the table probably wept with the hilarity of the situation. Anyways, what I'm saying is... Challenge yourself in those areas. How did we get on this? Mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. Stinky cheeses. Oh, we're talking about appreciate the beauty that God. The end. Yeah. Not just the beauty, but also the bounty of the beauty. Like, it's so much of it that we can't appreciate at all. Well, and there's so much of it that you're going to have favorites. I just think that there's an easiness to settling into your favorites and then. Not looking past it. And one of those things that this is a good down home application right here is that if you have felt like it's totally acceptable for like, it's not uncommon for women to be confident in their own decisions about what they like or what they Mm -hmm. don't like. Yeah. And then you marry a man who has a very different set of things that he likes. And it is really common for women to just assume that the things that they enjoy are superior and are better sure. than what their husband enjoys instead of 
instead of making a point of learning to appreciate the things that right. he appreciates, as hopefully he's doing that with, with you, you too. Well. Yeah. yeah. That there is a, there are two sides of that. But the idea of being like, no, 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 I don't like a big piece of steak for dinner. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just being like, no, I am a yeah. salad person. We will not yeah. have a big steak for dinner. Even if that's like your husband's idea of the most beautiful meal he could have. Yeah. Right. It's good to get out a little more mm-hmm. from your own. Yeah. Exactly. Immediate preferences. Should I pull up some of the other questions that we had? You should indeed. Um, okay. Okay, let's see. I made a note, guys. Made a note. Okay. Um, okay, this one's really quick. Can y'all talk about some of your favorite missionary biographies? I have so many Christian friends who are giving into so much COVID fear, and I'd love to start more conversations about Christians that have gone through some real trials with bravery and faith. So many won't even come back to church. Ours is one of the few uh, area churches open, but we're only half full at most. Mm -hmm. Wanting to encourage some backbones. Yeah. I always say my top three are evidence not seen, which is Darlene Diebler Rose. Okay. I really like that one. Have you read that one? Nope. Yeah, you should. Uh, we've all read, but it's still real good. The Hiding Place. Yeah. Uh, and I love God's Smuggler. Also, those are all mm-hmm. different for different reasons. Do yeah. you have any other ones up in Gosh. your... Uh, no, not off the top My of kids head. have a lot of, like... There's a bunch of different ones that they have that are more... I think what I'm trying to say is some of the books are more, it's more that the missionary's life was magnificent than that the book is magnificent. Sure. It's like, so yeah. there, I feel like we probably have several different versions of Hudson Taylor or right. uh, Eric Little or all, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really, those are the ones that I really enjoyed. And I, you know, I was noticing, this just reminds me, um, I'm always struck in the, when you're reading Kings and Chronicles, right before, right before it all, the wheels fall off and the Babylonians come and destroy everything. Yeah. Uh, and, and take everything out of the temple. I notice that the, that the Jews did it to themselves first. Like they plundered the temple first and mailed it off to the king of Assyria. You know, it was like they went and stripped the gold and took the stuff and shipped it out as tribute so it was like they plundered their own temple before the Babylonians ever did. Um, and they defiled their own temple yeah. with the idolatry before the Babylonians ever did. And I'm noticing that Christians right now in this moment seem to be doing that. They are ceasing worship before the government makes them. They are stopping talking before right. it's illegal. It's like... They are sabotaging We're their quickly own... We're going to... Let us quickly do everything for you before, before you, you ransack the churches. So that basically, the precedent's already there. We've already established that we are not opposed well, to also plundering we've, the we've temple. We've already established that you ought to be the boss of this place. Like, like, who are we most concerned about honoring here? Yeah, but I just feel like the church took away its own voice before the government did it. In terms of yep. making it illegal to preach or whatever. You know, like how many churches said, we need to be silent and not speak to this cultural moment. Before, like the government has not yet said, you're not allowed to speak on that subject. <laughs> we just, we imposed our own gag order on ourselves, much like plundering our own temple and sending it off to Tiglath Pileser or well, whoever. Well, Luke's been reading a great book, uh, Idols for Destruction, which is a really magnificent book, but parts I've been hearing of it from him. He's like, oh Mm -hmm. my word. And it is one of those ones that's just shockingly um, on point. Prophetic. Like it was written a long time ago, but it's like Mm -hmm. let me lay out for you what's going to happen. You know, it's it's amazing. And one of the things that he pointed out, he's like, isn't it funny that we don't even, how often you don't think about it, but it is the case that who actually crucified Jesus? Like, it Mm -hmm. was the church uh-huh. And yeah. also the civil authorities. Like, who is it that has always, like, always the church broadly has yeah. not been faithful? Well, and I <laughs> I noticed, too, like, 
I've seen, there's a lot of Christians policing each other on, oh. don't say that, that's harsh. Somebody could be driven away from Christ just by reading that, what you just said. You know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's usually the Your harshness. Tone. It's the harshness. It's the, but it's the you tone know patrol I officers today that I thought was really interesting hmm. is the description of Josiah being on a hot tear with taking down everything like knocking yeah. it down like if you don't just breeze through that if you really stop and pay attention mm-hmm. he is really instituting a pretty major purge and then he's pulling the bones out of the sepulchers and burning them but, on top and also of the altars burning the priests on top of Burn, the altars yeah. like defiling yeah. the whole and then shebang he takes down the mount of corruption that was there that had the high places, and I suddenly noticed, you know, like all the previous kings, it would say like they were a good king, and yet the high but places. But they did not, yeah. But I just struck me today for the first time, those high places there were built by Solomon, which means they must have been magnificent. Yeah. You know, and you kind of just think, whatever, it was a high place. But you know if Solomon built it, it wasn't just a little wasn't huddle a of huts up there. And probably there was a reason people felt like, like they didn't want to destroy that. maybe we should tear that down. Yeah. You know, like maybe that's just sort of untouchable, yeah. whatever probably had real historic impact by that time anyhow uh so he's really going the distance and another side note i'm always also struck by the fact that there was homosexual prostitution going on in the temple oh yeah where you're like and not and something else because i just noticed that the uh the women were we weaving tapestries for asherah Yes, tapestries yeah. while they had yeah. the, the... Who is Ishtar, the queen of heaven. Yeah, so, nothing about it was all right Yeah, what was so, happening. So anyways, you just know that things have been worse than our current moment. However... But also, however, I, I think it's hard to not feel like this is a... You had a... I, I'll come back to yeah, this. Yeah, I was going what you somewhere with this. I realized was, I was going to be taking I an exit. I think <laughs> this is a pretty extremist purge that he's doing. He is... Knocking it all down and powdering it and stewing yeah. it about just in case. And then, like, lest we forget to drag their bones out and burn those two, sort of. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just really, let's be thorough. And he did take down the high places, which a bunch of the other guys didn't. And then it says, and I was really struck by this, that he loved the Lord his God with all his heart, his soul, and his might. Which is, like, oh, there it is. Like... He. That's what it looked like. That well, was the description. Especially, especially because he was a king who had might that he could implement that mm-hmm. way. That he actually loved the Lord with all of his kingly strength, which anointed, like, amounted to authority over places sure. that other faithful people would not have had authority. But I'm just saying that, like, what does it look like for someone to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, and might? It doesn't look like. Oh, I think somebody might have been driven away from Christ by the fact that you just disapproved of something publicly. Your tone was harsh when you said the new transgender laws are ridiculous or something. Right. Or yeah. it's just like, I think he wasn't hiding his light under a bushel about what he thought about the corruptions of his day. No. And we are not, I'm not advocating that we go and burn things down and loot things oh, out no. of sepulchers. But that's what I meant about he actually, his might yeah. was the might of a king. But no one was in doubt about what he thought about the corruptions. And I just think it's so interesting that Christians in the name of Christ are shutting up all the other Christians. Like, don't yeah. you see that you're going to drive people away? Rather than don't you see that God wants us to Don't you to see that you're not actually when using your... there are sodomite prostitutes in the temple, we ought to disapprove of it. And people ought to know. People ought to recognize that we disapprove uh-huh. of that. We ought yeah. to. Well, and that's the thing is that a lot of... A lot of the power of the situation right now is that coercion of conscience, which is that the whole point is to make people say something that is not what they believe. Right. Or just not say something that they do believe. But but both, because yeah. by trying to force you to do something that's actually shameful. Like when you don't believe something, mm-hmm. but they're like, you have to, you know, do yep. this. And then you end up doing it just to pacify them. Pacify them. Mm-hmm. That's an actual, that is a shameful 
way to behave. And then yeah. having done that, I think it was dad that made that comment that that was a communist. He was quoting someone else. It was a communist strategy was actually that it has to be self-evidently false. It has to be visibly stupid, which is why when you see things, for instance, like the New York Times, seriously running that thing about if one mask is good, it's two better. And everybody, <laughs> maybe three, maybe we should get inside a trash bag. And, and <laughs> this goes back to Ben's idea that we all glue our nostrils shut. <laughs> <laughs> Best COVID prove, tip yet. <laughs> to prove that we take this seriously. Uh, anyways, the point that I'm trying to make is that is that you're just deluding yourself if you think that the times that we're living in is going to be the time when you're going to not, when your faith is not offensive to people or when yeah. just the kindest, most lovingly worded expression of your faith is still going to be offensive to yes. people. And you just yes. need to make your peace with that fact. Yeah. To say nothing of how funny it is when you see Christians screeching at one another because they think the other person Again, was being unloving. Actually, the most <laughs> the most nasty messages that I've ever gotten. Oh yeah, I were know. like the the peak tacky nasty messages are always from people who think that I am harsh or unkind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're oh, and they're amazing. like screaming with their hair on fire and pointing. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's like that part in um. But it always says it's like the part like, in Princess Bride. Where the dream, isn't it a dream where the, like, witchy woman busts out of somewhere and is, like, got her finger in someone's (laughs) face and is screaming? But they're always, but what they're screaming is, you're not loving! Like, you're too... Or how dare you criticize someone? How dare you think you know how someone else should behave? And you do, there is a certain amount of breathlessness to it. Like, you're just looking at it like, what? Like... Yeah. Canst thou not hear thyself? <laughs> that was like the meme that I saw where someone was mad about something that dad wrote one time. And they were publishing their meme that they made of the quote. Publishing it as broadly as possible at all times and in all places to make yeah. sure everyone okay. knows that dad said a thing once. And and uh, with the hissy fit outrage of, of saying there is no context in all caps where this is appropriate <laughs> and, then, and I was like hang on hang on I said but they did they also have no but sense I of humor have found they a have no sense of humor so the fact that I said I assume you're excluding you <laughs> publishing it about for these <laughs> these purposes <laughs> And they're like, not funny, not funny. Oh, I mean, they can't, word. they can't think it's funny. But anyways, no. it kills me that that kind no. of thing happens all it does. the time. It does indeed, all the time. <laughs> and it, and it, yeah, and it's good. It's, it's almost as if Jesus might have needed to say a thing about getting the beam out of your eye. <laughs> It's almost as if that might be a human failing that we have. You know what I loved? I got it random. We had a guest preacher this last week, and um, he's great. And this is the second time we've had him. It's just, he's, it's always fun to listen to him. I'm sure you'll be able to listen to his sermon on the yeah. Christ Kirk app if you want to later. But anyways, my, the reason I say this is something that he pointed out in his sermon, which was great. Well, two things that really stood out. One was that Isaiah's ministry how heavy that was for Isaiah that he was basically called to be a prophet who would be hardening the people unto judgment and that his, what he was called to do was that like your ministry will be the ministry of ripening them for judgment, which is brutal with like, because, and this comes back to what, you were just saying yeah, is uh-huh. that, and Jesus himself was that way when he, when yeah. he gives parables and things where he says, he who has ears, let him hear. But mm-hmm. he knows that people are going to misunderstand it. Like Jesus yeah. is actually teaching things yeah. that is hardening some of the audience. And Isaiah even seems to not be sure he wants that. <laughs> like when the, you know, it's, it's, but that was interesting. The other thing that he said in the sermon I thought was really wonderful was that, in Hebrew, when you really want to emphasize something, you would repeat it. Mm-hmm. And three times repeated is like the biggest emphasis you can 
give to something. Okay. And he was saying that that's the fact that the angels are crying, holy, 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 mm-hmm. he said, is very significant because yeah. they're not, it's not, it's because it is the big thing that yeah. they're trying to say. Uh-huh. He said, but it's interesting that none of God's other attributes are repeated like that. They don't mm-hmm. say God is love, love, love. Yeah. Or God is merciful, merciful, merciful. Or God yeah. is just, just, just. But holy, holy, holy. Like yeah. that is the heart of the matter yeah. is that God yeah. is holy. And it, and it, anyways, it was a great message, but I thought that that, just that, it gives you a different sympathy with someone like Isaiah, realizing how many Christians have gone before in times when this is what God was doing with yeah. the people was yeah. hardening them unto judgment. And I don't think you can look at our culture right now and not think you can't think like, Oh, if I just got out there to that gay pride parade and I shared the gospel that they would all turn to Christ no, right now. Like, no. you know, that the gospel right now on a lot of those public places, public, uh, that the people are not soft to receive the gospel, yeah. but that hearing the gospel will harden the people. But also, like, I know once years ago, I was, like, kind of counseling this woman who was basically teetering on the brink of exploding her whole life and burning everything to the ground. Um, and I was trying to talk her back off the ledge, essentially, and it didn't work, you know, like she just did yeah. it. She just blew it up, burned it down, went full nuclear on everything. And it's, you could sit there going, oh no, did I say something wrong? Did I not do everything I could? Did I whatever? But I just, it felt so clear that my role in that was to be as clear of a signpost as possible yeah. to her That if you go further than this, yeah, you know, like it's like the road signs that say no gas for however long. It's like you are leaving the area. Yeah, and that was my role in that. It wasn't. It actually wasn't to fix it, win her back. I although that's what I was trying to do. Like yeah, that is what I was trying to do, and it didn't work. And then in retrospect, I feel like she can't say she wasn't warned. Because I was yeah. as clear as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was the road sign. And you don't ever want to be that. But at the same time, what a mercy of God to put a sign there. You know, yeah. like it was, you can't claim ignorance. Yeah. Because it was, it was clear. But it's, an, it's, but that's really hard. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's so great. Like in the Bible reading challenge right now, we're still in Kings, aren't we? Yeah. It, isn't that what I was reading this morning? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's so encouraging about reading the depressing narratives of all these kings that just bombed it out again and again. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and he was 12 years old and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And and they, all of this is just in the high places too. It's the thing that culturally we know what a high place is. We have high places. I think typically it's, I think abortion is one of the really clear ones where you sacred have, spaces, yeah. it's a sacred, it's a sacred and honored thing where mm-hmm. even men who love the Lord and fear the Lord have not been able to take that down. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it or didn't yeah. want to, or mm-hmm. just wanted to run around and look holy without trying to get right. involved with that high place or whatever. And I just think it's comforting to read like all of this that's happening is well before Jesus, like well before this decisive battle, this decisive yeah. victory, and the one king who took down every last high place and and will never be dead, yeah. will never be not reigning again, yeah. and will never be. But it's so comforting because you think it's neat to see that this kind of travailing Mm -hmm. is actually the story of the world. Yeah. Like, that this kind of, that that's just a thing that we're part of. It's like part of the whole narrative. And I think it was interesting to note that I think it was Manasseh who went the whole distance of evil. But what a religious man he was. I mean, he was busily being religious, anointing up the priests of every abomination Mm -hmm. and 
finding familiar busy, spirits. Busy, busy, Getting busy. the wizards on tap. He also probably hustled shrines. off to sign some legislation <laughs> five minutes after he was inaugurated. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, what a... A diligently religious man. Yeah. It's just that you can be a religious man and it's all directed at the wrong God and it's an abominable. Which actually speaks, I think we gotta connect another current event right here. I don't understand. I doubt any of our listeners understand it either, so we're really preaching to the choir here. But it is a bit of a stunner to have anyone proud that at least we got a victory for women that Kamala I is a VP. I it actually completely took the wind out of my sails when I that, and I wasn't seeing it like it's not people oh. I follow. I think it was all suggested oh, posts. No. Like I saw Christian Here's a great thing. Christian women. I saw I'm it. so pleased to stand with my sister in this and be so proud of women. You know what I was? I was like, what a, you know what? One thing I love about Jezebel is that she was a woman. I mean, I'm so proud of her well, for that. Well, and not just that. She was a woman who had the king's number. She got what she wanted from him. Nero's mom? A woman. <laughs> you know what? I, I really find that that situation took... I just was like, no. What? You're like, what? What? Athaliah? Like, <laughs> she's my favorite woman, but also she's a great... Feminine example strength. of everyone. She murdered, Feminine murdered, there. murdered everyone so that she could instead reign instead of all the boys, Basically, right? Wasn't it her son died she so she killed everybody else? The patriarchy going up and she down. She did so good. She was just amazing for women kind. And <sighs> and then awesomely when they out pops the actual heir to the throne, she has the gall to scream <laughs> treatment. treatment. <laughs> yeah, she was like, how dare they? But I was laughing too because, you know, women have been in power a lot. a lot. And one of the ways that women get in power is sleeping their way to the top. And that's never actually been something that Christians are supposed to admire. Like, And I'm not saying, and that is to be clear, I'm not saying that Kamala slept her way to the top. But she's done worse her way to the top. Maybe the pro-abortion nightmare yeah. of an unprincipled woman, <laughs> and why we would all be just really pleased to see at well, least, at least this hater of God got in charge. <laughs> because <laughs> one of the things that's pretty rare in this world is women. Yeah, you can't find one. No, for no. love or money. <laughs> So when you spot oh, one, I've you been treasure it. I've been listening for my school assignment. So I'm not recommending it to everyone, but it's brutal. And it's so much foul language, which is why I'm not recommending it. But I've been listening to Bonfire of the Vanities. Oh, sure. And yeah. great googly moogly. It, it is painful to listen to. I mean, and also very funny. I mean, like, but just so brutal. And actually, I think that the title itself deserves an award because oh, the bonfire of title, the vanities. Yeah. And and it's just, oh, it's so good. But anyways, in that whole, it's like I was thinking how the whole storyline, like what makes him so good at telling this kind of story is that he's not really, he's telling a story of like high powered people in high powered positions, mm -hmm. but by revealing their innermost thoughts, <clears throat> he makes, I'm like, it just is painful to look at. Yeah. It like hurts. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, uh, it's like a guy who's, you know, a bond trader, a wall street millionaire in New York with a park Avenue apartment, cheating on his wife, of course, all kinds of things, which could be told in a story to be like the man in the great suit, the man yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. But one of the things he has all the men doing all the time is like flexing their, like one guy that's always trying to make his sternocleidomastoid muscles stand out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this guy always thinks in his own head, in his own narratives as he's like trying to figure stuff out, he calls himself a master of the universe. <laughs> and every time he's like, I'm a master of the universe. I should take what I want, you know, because yeah. I am a master of the universe. <laughs> oh, no. And it's very painful. It makes your eyes water. But what was really killing me about this was realizing how we're actually losing that social consciousness that 
right. that, that right. people would be like, right on, good self-love. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because the, the writing is so assuming a culture that recognizes that as shameful. Yeah, that pomposity so, was still that, not that, admired. Exactly. Yeah. Like, this is completely shameful. And, yeah. and instead, I think people now would be reading it without... No, like, we're getting closer and closer to the moment where people can announce that they are the god Ra incarnate. Oh, and, yeah. And people you must be like, kiss my ring. And everybody like, be like, you go. I should because he. I need you to know, support him. He's got a great self image. Uh, <laughs> it's brutal. But it is an interesting thing to watch happening in the culture all around you. And it's just a good time. I just like to tell everyone. To, it's a good time to make sure that you're not taking on extra baggage from the <laughs> world right now. Like, because they're oh, working man. hard to dish oh, yeah. it out. Well, you know, the whole parable about building your house on the rock as opposed to the sand. Because when mm-hmm. the storm comes, I think what we're seeing right now is the storm. It's coming and everything's washing away. And some away. people will still have a house at the end of it. Yeah, and other people will yeah. be out there desperately clinging to that we had a we had a really there. wild windstorm not long ago a couple weeks maybe yeah and it was enough to be real lively in the night hours <laughs> it was it was like yeah it blew our fence down in multiple directions yeah we didn't <laughs> we lost some things from the property but not our house but we <laughs> good, but good. but it was it's crazy because there you are it was like 60 mile an hour winds so like when the lights were on in our bedroom because it was night you could see the windows all flexing yeah. in the wind you could feel it like the yeah. house was mm-hmm. vibrating mm-hmm. and it was so loud and you thought is our roof about to fly off yeah. i mean like what yeah. are we looking at right now and in that moment I kept thinking of that psalm that is stormy winds that do his pleasure. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, you know, you're praying and I was like, Lord, let our house do your pleasure also. <laughs> <laughs> like, <clears throat> like I know, you know, like we're, and I think that I'm using that as a metaphor of this time that is like, Lord, preserve us because let us be a testimony right. to your judgment, to your mercy to mm-hmm. your, you know, like, mm-hmm. let us be a testimony, but, but also at the same time as not asking the Lord to withhold justice or withhold, like, yeah. if you know what, I, like, it's that, does, it's wanting to be aligned with God's purposes yeah. and how that's not necessarily a, and we cannot pretend we don't deserve this judgment good and hard. No, and I, I just, that's for sure. I just keep praying that God would bring us as a people to our knees in repentance and not for destruction. Mm -hmm. You know, like just please, whatever it takes to get us to actually admit our sin and turn back Mm -hmm. to him. Because what we need right now is not a president and senators. We need another George Whitfield. That's what I was going to say. A great awakening. (laughs) Uh We need a great awakening. Uh And we also need Christians who know that. That's yes. the thing, is yes. that the Christians who act like, nah, let's not do that right and now. And just knowing that, like, you can't do a blessed thing about what the legislature is up to right now. I mean, sure, you can write your senator or whatever. You can do but that. But you're not really but in the position of power, probably. you're not, in fact, the one with the emergency brake in your hand. You can't, like... If you, you know, are, pull it. do it, <laughs> yeah, if that's you. Um, but what you can do is what God has assigned you and you can do it faithfully and you can do it today and you can do it again tomorrow and you can do it obediently, which means trusting him being joyful anyways, remembering the Proverbs 31 woman laughs at the days to come. And that is a bigger assignment for us these days. Well, I was thinking I had that moment of being like, do I need to like stock up on something or like you know, you're like trying to think of like, but you cannot anticipate what no. the consequences is of, no. of this is going to be. No. And I also realized, isn't it interesting? There are, there are specific Bible passages about this. Yeah. Do not worry mm-hmm. about what you will eat or drink yeah. or yeah. like for your father is the thing in is, charge. Be faithful today and be faithful tomorrow. And God can use that and actually has promised to use that. But right. those are the means that you have in front of you for affecting change in yeah, the culture. Yeah, and I want to say, this is important. 
I think the biggest temptation to faithful Christians right now is going to be to get so distracted with the bad things that are happening out there that you decide to allow a lot of bad things to happen in yes. your own heart. Resentment, despair, having a bad toot about what everybody's doing, not like yep. just just being like, I hate this disobedient country so much. I hate yeah. it. Instead of realizing that by allowing complaining and bitterness and all these things in your own life, you're being as defiant of, like, you yeah. are defying God in that sin. And to just back it up and and think, no, it's really important. It actually reminds me of when I um, had to get physical therapy for my problems that came about to me because of the twins, <laughs> the yeah. abdominal therapies that I <laughs> needed to go through. And one of the things that the physical therapist told me is like, these exercises do way more good for you if you do the, way less of them very exactly the way that I'm telling you to do it. Okay. Like cranking out a bunch of them all willy nilly is probably more likely to do damage yeah. than like doing five very concentrated sure. repeats of doing it correctly. And that is sort of like this, yeah. which is that don't think that you can run around in a frenzied spirit of Christian ish principles applied to civic things, but not be confessing your sins and right. not, and don't think that that's going to be a fruitful work. No. That you're about. And knowing that in God's economy, he uses the the small things of the world to overturn the great. He uses the foolish of this world to upend, um, you know, the wise and the elite and everything. And so you may think, well, I'm just a little nobody sitting here in nobodyville. And, you know, like, yeah. what what can I do? What does it even you matter? You can do the thing in front of you right now and trust that God will use it in his way and that his economy never tallies with ours. Yeah, and if you go back to what we were talking about earlier, about this is actually the story of the whole world, don't forget what that climax of all of history was, which was a baby born into a manger in Bethlehem that right. overturned all of everything. The principalities principalities and, powers. and powers. And that we're on the other side of that. And so to now doubt that you being faithful in a little place, in a little home, is to actually show a lot of unbelief about all of history and what God has done. Like, mm -hmm. if you think about it, here we are reading Kings about all these things that happened in ancient Israel and ancient, you know, all these yeah. terrible dark times. But that all led up to Christ. And then after that, like, have you considered that you're on the other side of the world from where Jesus came, that you know about yeah. him, that you have his word, that Christians are everywhere? Like, how much has been accomplished since well, then? And how how really legitimate could be the complaints of the Israelites standing on the banks of the Red Sea? Like, Moses, what are you doing? This does not oh. seem like a good idea. Pharaoh's coming after us. The well, sea's in front of us. Like, and on the other my side... My kids are tired and I'm pregnant and we had a yeah. place to eat and be at home. And you on know. the other side of this Red Sea... There's a stinking wilderness and no food. And other people's countries. And everything's going to be bad. And yeah. so it's just like, yeah, from from that perspective, it probably looked terrible. But the question is, do you trust God or do you not? So, And it's real fundamental. Do you trust that he actually already has the victory in Christ? Yeah. And he does. And do you trust that his purposes are being worked out? Yes. And, and don't forget how many, well, current living Christians you share this with but also how many christians throughout all of history yeah. have shared this exact same sensation that you know, we're all dealing with what's really funny is that we've been to um a number of different conferences with uh just for nsa with with a lot of more mainstream kind of nominal ish christians and one of the real popular verses that they all quote with a meaningful just heartfelt they love to to bring up for such a time as this oh yeah that's the for one for such a time as this <laughs> and the thing is for as kind of emptied of all meaning as people can make that this is why god put you here like he put you here in this moment in this generation for a reason 
and here you are yeah. to do what he put in front of you to do. So, and that, nail I, it. And I think what a great comfort it is that the good works that he prepared for you to walk in. And that that does not mean, it doesn't mean that all your might will parallel all of Josiah's no. might. Your might might parallel getting the fridge cleaned out and making a good meal. And that yeah. that, that is loving the Lord your God with all of your might. Like, yeah. what is your actual dominion? And yeah. how can you honor him in that? And... Tear down the little miniature high places in your house. <laughs> you got any little weirdo shrines up in there? And and there's and a real they, there's a real level I, here it, where uh, you have to say uh, you have to get off your flattering lenses of looking at your life yeah. through the because is your little shrine that you have built is it your exercise time? Is it you know what I mean? Like, well, Becca, I can faithfully say no, it is not. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and like, answer this. What is it that's sacred? Yeah, you know, like what, what is, is the thing that feels like letting too much be available to God? Like, what is the thing that you're clenching in your little mm-hmm. hands? Like anything but doing what my husband asked. Yeah, or, or is it having order at all costs? Anything but forgiving my father. Yeah. Anything but allowing my children to have more fun in their day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, yeah, you know, uptight about that. There are a lot of there places. are a lot of little things where you can think. What's the thing that you're like? Well, it would break my heart if I had to move out of this house. Like, or it would, you know, the things that most yeah. of us probably have something that we are aware that our little hand is grasping mm-hmm. after, or that we're trying to kind of hide. Like, you know, like are you know how people do this when they're having their photo taken? There's there's some like. I'm going to stand behind this chair so that my hips I won't always, show. I always or, look like this. I always you do know, this weird position. But like hide yeah. behind the kids yeah. for the photo or what, you know, like there's a lot of like little coping things that people do because they don't want this to show or they don't want that to show. And I think we do that in our daily lives as well. Where there's From ourselves. We're like, I'm not going to look straight on at that behavior. anyone to know about your online gambling. <laughs> <laughs> or how about, your, how about your pain pill usage or your sleeping pill usage? Yeah. Or what are you doing that is the thing that you're like justifying loosely to yourself? Yeah. But if you said it out loud seasonal, to someone. It's just seasonal depression. Oh, this is just nothing in particular that I'm Postpartum doing. Postpartum depression. It's, yeah. Whatever that is or, untouchable. Or I'm just looking at these skis bomb accounts to try to figure out how to seduce my husband. Oh, yeah. That's That'd good. be good. That'd be really well, great. But I'm saying, what are the things that you've let slip in that yeah. you're being like, I'll just dabble over here yeah, and I'll dabble right? over there. Because now right. is the time to yeah. recognize that loving the Lord your God with all your might means trashing every bit of idolatry that is yeah. within your own domain. And I would be ready to bet that a lot of those can be found on your phone. Yeah. You know. And it might be any number of things on your phone. Yeah. It could be anything. Well, like a, on that note. <laughs> that we, is where we We stop. recommend <laughs> you look on your phone. For the dark idols. Dust through your apps and yeah. ask yourself. And trash. Are you a little too attached? Trash yo apps. To your daily steps. <laughs> your daily steps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So tip? Um, yes. One quick tip. Quick, quick tip. Which is that? Oh, I have a funny one too. Okay, you do yours then. Uh, so since you posted a job posting for your husband... Which, which really produced Brought results. Some ideas. Yeah, I know. good well, job, everyone. Just gonna throw this out there that my husband is looking for a finance guy. So Ooh. up from a bookkeeper, down from a CEO, somewhere in there, you can okay, you can get in so touch. So is he with also probably on the LinkedIn? Find. I don't know if he's on LinkedIn, I but bet he is, look at he? nsa.edu. Okay, and you can email. So you could always find uh, you can email. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's that. And uh, I think there's actually a local, there's a local news page um, called the Moscow Report. And it is, did I just turn this off? I might have. No, I didn't. Um, it's called the Moscow Report. I think it's like, 
I don't know what the actual address is, like MoscowIdaho.news or something like that. Mm-hmm. You want to be careful because there's some real attack sites out there that go under the guise of reporting on Moscow. But this is just like a sort yeah. of a news page about what's going on in town, but it's not got the crazy left bias. Um, but I think they're going to open a like a jobs posting section oh, on fun. there That's so you could always keep your eye there i don't think it's, there's anything up there yet but if you are one of the people who is kind of wondering about what's yeah. available here trying to keep relocate your eye yourself. there yeah yeah all right well what was your tip you had one no i, was, I don't have one. Oh. i can think really hard oh, no okay. uh, yeah okay it's another job posting oh okay. since i really encouraged everyone to go buy the tupperwares yeah. All I've found out is how hard it is to buy the Tupperware. So oh. if one of the people on this uh, listeners is some kind of a Tupperware insider with a, with a <laughs> lead on the fix and mix bowls, you should definitely reach out. I don't have a job for you. I just <laughs> know people who might want to order them. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Until next time. All right. Goodbye. Bye.